All right, for this week's Reddit reply, we have to talk about highly edited uh, Marvel Champions content, uh, basically how to play cards and doing what they say. And, and it, it's our it's our rule stuff. There's gonna be a lot of rule stuff. But the first one is actually an interesting comment um, that I've toyed around with the idea of. So let's let's take a look at it. All right, so the first one that I saw was, are there any highly edited uh, Marvel Champions content on YouTube? The majority of content surrounding the game seems to be just or it seems to be people just playing with webcam and live commentary and their thoughts and actions. Are there any content creators that take a, uh, individual matches of Marvel Champions and edit them more? Like showing card descriptions on screen, explaining every move, phase, and having HP counters on screen. And um, they explain what they were kind of like looking for with this one thing and, and whatnot. Here's the thing. A lot of the content that I do is obviously live streamed. And the live streaming community that I know, like doesn't want me to explain every action I'm doing. Uh, and I, I've thought about this because, you know, they, they just want me to watch me play the game and they want to watch me draw shadow of the past and just make memes and whatnot. Um, and that's kind of what we do, right? We can, we kind of do that. And when I edit it down, I used to edit it a lot more, but then I realized there was really no point. I know people, some people like the editing, some people don't. So I played it with both ways and I've looked at the stats and it's just, it makes sense not to edit for me, for my audience. But here's the thing. We used to do Sunday morning um, coffee and board games on this channel. And it's something I would like to do. It's just a really weird thing to kind of do. But I would like to do some content that is edited like this. My very first video, uh, I was actually looking back at it recently. I actually put the cards up on the screen. And the problem with that is, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest with you. The problem with it is that it is content that... Um, is very, 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 very time consuming. I haven't found a very efficient way of doing it to be able to put all the cards on the screen. And to be frank, the audience there to support the amount of time it would take uh, isn't really there. And that's not, I mean, I guess that is partially me also just making excuses for not taking the time and doing it. Like, you know, it might be a situation like if you build it, they will they will come. Um, so I do want to do more highly edited content. I, I do want to be able to show cards on screen. I'm hoping, I'm trying to figure out a, a decent way. If anyone knows a way, and this is kind of why I wanted to talk about this, of putting cards up on screen from voice command, let me know. I've searched it several different ways. I've tried it a bit. Uh, but it's kind of a, a weird program. I forgot the program that I used. Uh, this was like months ago. I was trying to figure this out. Uh, but it didn't work great. It didn't pull up the cards I wanted to. It was it was kind of janky, really. Uh, so I don't know if there's an efficient way to do this. Because that would be the easiest way to do things. Because uh, to, to edit, like to do highly edited content, there's a couple of different ways of doing it, right? So one of the big ways is that I could each hand put up on the screen all the cards that are used, right? And talk about the cards. But then it's how much depth do we want to get into with each of the cards, right? And then, okay, if you if you talk about each of the cards individually and what they do, and then you just end up using three or four of them as resources anyway, was it worth talking about them? Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. You're just talking about your actions and what you're doing. I like the idea of talking through the thought process. I've learned that a lot of people are interested in that. And I think that is something I could do more often uh, for for videos that aren't streamed. I think the stream videos are just going to be what they are. But I think there is a way to to cut, to, to make a much tighter package um, that might be more interesting. But yeah, just to be frank, like this is a part, there was, there's two reasons for those that know, and I've been around the channel for a while with the Sunday morning uh, coffee and board games. Uh, there's two reasons why I don't do it as much anymore. The one reason was because it's hard to find time to record it. And it was also kind of like rough because if I if I played the game and I just got a bad hand or I just lost because I, I, whatever reason, like it kind of stinks to put that one up online. Like I don't mind putting up losses on live streams because they happen. But when I know it's going to be something that like isn't like the best of me playing, it, it's kind of, it, it hurts to edit it. I'll be honest. Maybe it's my pride talking because it's just like, you're going to be editing and it's going to take you five to 10 hours to do what this person would want, which I think is a good idea. And I'm not knocking the idea. I think, I think it is needed, um, but it would take you for one video, five to 10 hours to do of again, putting up every single card, explaining every interaction, explaining possibilities, explaining everything all the way through. And then it's going to be a really long video in general. And I don't know how many people would also watch a like two hour solo video, right? And again, 
you can argue then, well, you know, you could speed up a little bit with the cards on there, but it's still going to slow it down. So like, how much do you explain? Do you explain the thought? But like, I don't know. I don't know what the right answer is. That's the thing. But anyway, back to the Sunday morning coffee thing. One was finding time to do it. And two was editing it. I would in the past record them on Tuesdays and I would edit them throughout the week when I had some free time and I would be uploading it late Saturday night to run Sunday. And it was just a very inefficient thing. It took away from me recording other videos or doing other things, which is the other issue. Like if I had an editor, yeah, I, I would, I would love to, to do this type of content. I would record that type of content all day, every day. Uh, but unfortunately the channel doesn't make enough to, to get an editor, right? I, I, I would want to pay them. Um, so it doesn't make enough to do, to do that. So it'd be something I would have to do. And in turn of doing that, I would sacrifice probably about three videos a week in order to do it, which maybe it gets the views and maybe it doesn't. And this is the other issue is that with this type of content in general, play content, like people uh, just playing the game, it gets about half the amount of views that this video will get. This video that we're just going to be talking about the game and it's very simple to edit. It's very simple to put together. It's very simple. It's, it's simple and straightforward. And also now, cause I've done it for a year and a half. It's, it's very like, I could just, I could just do it easily, but this video will get double the amount of views of a play view play through video will. So again, it comes to where's my time best spent at this point. Do I do more videos like this, where it's going to help grow the channel, grow the audience, grow everything. Or do I make a video like this, which I do agree is needed from content creators. I do agree that there is a niche there that needs to be filled and I would love to fill it, but I just can't do it without an editor. So anyway, with all that being said, cause this is a very long rant now, if, if hypothetically D20 was to try to do this, what information do you think would be interesting, right? If I like, let's, I mean, break it down as much as possible, write a comment as long as you want. Uh, cause I need to know, like, do you want to know every single card that's in hand, right? Do you want to know the possibilities of each of those cards? Do you want to know all the different options of what I could do or what I am going to do? Do you want to know everything of like, okay, first step one, of the phase is make sure to add a threat to the main scheme, right? Step two is, is to declare uh defenders against his attack or the the villain's attacker right like should i break it down that basic and even if it's you only do it for the first round do you do that for the first round for all the videos or just one of the video? like there's a lot of questions and i don't know how much is too much because we've also had playthroughs where i've edited things but it's like a 50 minute playthrough and people tune out after 15 minutes i can see the stats it just it just drops off because people don't want to watch a game through even if it's edited they don't want to watch that much of it. So anyway, that's my open question. I Like I said, I, I, I don't want to rag on this person or anything like that. It's not like that at all. I think it's a really good idea. I do think it's needed uh, in this space. It's just, it's going to be a massive time commitment. So I have to figure out, okay, what exactly do people want? And if there's an easier way to get cards on the screen, I guess I could theoretically just keep showing the card and zooming the camera in, zooming it out. Uh, it's just going to add on to recording time. So it's going to take a, a like, couple hours to record the video which is the worst thing in the world i mean it makes editing easier i guess uh but maybe we do it that way right because if you watch the live stream over on twitch.tv backslash g20 we're working you've seen we do camera zooms and whatever maybe i just do that right zoom in all the way. I, I don't know i need your ideas i need your ideas because again i think this is a good idea and i would like to attempt something like this when a card says if your identity has the avenger trait does your hero have to be in hero form to play it the card just has to have the avenger trait so i'm assuming that they mean honorary avenger i'm assuming this is what they're talking about maybe maybe not but this is an example of it uh so it says play only if your identity has the avenger trait your your identity is either side uh if you're alter ego and you have the avenger trait or if you're hero and you have the avenger trait that's this that's the side you could play it on it's just whatever side says avenger on it now fun fact when this does attach to a character so let's say you attach it to a hero so the attached character gets plus one hit point and gains the Avenger trait. The character gains the Avenger trait. So they will have Avenger on Alter Ego and Hero side. Anyone else have trouble with Zola on Solo? Any tips, guys? So far, I played Hawkeye, Spider-Woman, She-Hulk, uh, Rocket, Gambit, Rogue, Wolverine, and only one with Wolverine. And that was a normal mode. Somehow, I haven't struggled so much with any of the villain from the set. We'll, tr uh, we'll be trying experts tonight. Any tips? Yeah, uh, Black Panther, perfect defense. Black Panther, flow like water. If you, if you are attacking with retaliate and like doing like a flow, like water deck where you're just like doing damage from defending, uh, he'll never retaliate you cause you never attacked him. Right. So do that. <laughs> That's the easiest way to do it. It just play his own game. 
So you never attack them. Uh, the other way and the, the bigger thing is like you basically have to line up massive swings against them, right? So you can't do like exhaust for two to, to deal two damage and you get Vitalia for one, right? Dealing two to take one is a terrible ratio. You shouldn't do it. Um, so like for Spider-Man, uh, for example, you basically want to be be doing swinging web kicks every single time. Like that's like that's all you should be doing against them at that point. Uh, just keep lining them up. Keep existing. And then keep doing swing web kicks and then use your attacking ability on like all the minions that are going to come out. All right, Doctor Strange, this may be a hot take, but I just don't see why everyone has Doctor Strange is pretty much the most powerful character by far. Maybe it's just the way I play, but I don't see it. I do think he's powerful and I have him in my top 10. He's just not my top five. I would be interested to see what their top five is. He doesn't synergize with any aspect. All you're basically doing is the invocation deck and all they're powerful. I don't think is it's that powerful that it makes him the strongest character in the game. I only play multi-hander and multiplayer, so maybe that's why. I know he has status cards, but or is he status isn't that powerful in multiplayer one of his invocation decks is useless is there no status cards for him to switch out signature allies really good just for the invocation deck but i don't think he's op he's mystic so that helps him but puts him somewhere in the top 10 i think domino ironheart x23 are more powerful than a few so fun fun fact i agree that domino ironheart and x23 can be more powerful i think domino and ironheart are more powerful when they're built out right and i will argue this with anyone is strange is very very strong out of the gate because of that invocation deck because he can draw so many cards i don't even remember all of his invocation cards off the top of my head because i don't play him enough because i just i i don't care um but really quick looking at his invocation cards uh do they have it all right there it is all right so confuse the villain uh remove four threat from a scheme one for four threat removal is, is monstrously huge and be able to confuse the villain crazy strong right one for three give up to three characters each tough status card uh, again this is really nice one of the big strategies for strange is to get as many allies out there as possible so you can play this card and then just give them all tough statuses so you have a ton of blocks people do this a lot with multiple man or at least they used to uh the vapors choose a status card and play and replace the status card with a different status card so this is yeah i mean this is like the one card that's not as great um but again it, a lot of the villains nowadays come in with a tough status and this card just decimates that because now they're stunned or confused. Uh, the wins card, draw three cards, right? That, that's huge. That's absolutely huge being able to draw three cards. Um, and then it goes into this. So, yeah, I agree the status card isn't great, but it's actually not uh, terrible nowadays because so much comes in with tough. That's what makes them so powerful is that you're basically able to play your strongest cards over and over and over and over again. And once you get Wong out there and you can kind of cycle through them, it's crazy. I mean, it's just crazy strong. So that's what makes him good. Now, when you talk about top end power, I think when I think when Ironheart is built out, she is one of the most powerful heroes in the game. The problem is getting the stage three can sometimes be a pain. Um, and same with Domino. I think Domino is exceptionally powerful. But again, you have to get built out with Sharpshooter and her pistols and all that fun stuff. So it takes a little bit for for it to work. Versus Doctor Strange, you just you just need to deal the invocation deck out there. So I don't know. Maybe they need to mess around with more. I mean, I I agree to a point that i also don't think he when when you're comparing completely built out characters i don't think he is actually the strongest i, I think he's still up there and the mystic trait is stupidly powerful and that's a whole nother thing because he can just get through the cards he wants to but yeah built out i would kind of agree but the thing is being able to put tough statuses on three characters to me is like one of the biggest things i mean again i just i'm gonna play cheap allies with strange and i'm just gonna have them block and i have three rounds of blocking and i just don't care about anything at that point question about desperate defense never back down interactions uh so if you were to defend with desperate defense and some damage would come through but you respond with a jump flip sidestep do you still ready afterward if you do not take any damage from the attack or is that des desperate defense desperate defense just says at, at the end and we'll we'll bring it up here while we talk about it um it's just if you take any damage right that that's that's all it says so um if you were when you're a hero defense against attack it gets plus two for that attack if you take no damage from that attack ready your your hero well when you do sidestep it's when you would take any attack you sidestep out of the way of it so again you defended against it you took no damage so you would still ready up can you play an upgrade card from your hand during the villain phase now just generally now uh it was interrupt like keyword no so it would already be on the table and that's how you would do the interrupt on it but uh allies upgrades and supports i don't think there's any example of it can being played on the villain's turn maybe that maybe there's one but i don't think there is but yeah generally speaking you can't do it 
Untapping Identity. I just picked up this game this weekend. Let's go. Along with a few expansions. Hopefully, uh, by a few, they mean all of them. <laughs> I started with Rhino and Spidey and got my butt handed to me. Uh, replayed Captain Marvel and decided I love this game. That's awesome. Rather than playing through the base set, I played through the Mojoverse campaign solo as Venom Protection. Uh, amazing. I can't believe how fun this game is. Even Solitaire. Yeah, it's a fantastic solo. Absolutely fantastic solo game. I've taken the rules pretty quickly, but one thing that does concern me, if I defend during the villain's turn, am I not able to perform basically action on my turn? I don't see anything about untapping at the start of my turn, but that makes defending seem seemingly worse than I would have thought. Yeah, that's the trade-off. That's the trade-off. And this is one of the things that's it's been discussed in the community of like, was this a good design quirk or not? Um, it is exhausting to defend worth it? And this is a part of the reason why defending wasn't that good in the beginning. And with 1.4, when a lot of cards triggered off of you defending, or before 1.4, a lot of cards triggered off of you like exhausting the defend, right? After 1.4, or when 1.4 came out, when you played defense card, you were considered a defender. So thus you could trigger all those defense like upgrades and supports and all that fun stuff. And that changed the game because you don't really have to exhaust as much. So yeah, it, it kind of stinks. Um, you know, I get what they're saying, but to me, that's like the the hard trade-off, I guess. Like that that's kind of the hard decisions you need to make. Plus, there's so much now with being able to bolster your defense a ton and just you do everything on the villain's turn instead of your turn, uh, which is an interesting way of playing the game. Um, but yeah, it, it's it seems worse. But once you understand of how the 1.4 rules work, and hopefully they, they do understand, um, with that you are declared a defender when you play a defense event with like the keyword defense. Uh, this allows you to trigger all those defense cards so you don't really have to exhaust and defend anymore. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. I've gotten into other videos about defensing defense stuff and how all that works. If you need like more clarification on it, like let me know also down in the comments about this and I'll be more than happy to uh, to do a video all about defense. Thoughts on solo only cards. I prefer to play the game solo and some aspects of heroes are better for solo play. However, it would be nice to have some the same flexibility as multiplayer. Uh, Example, Hulk is really fun to play in aggression, but it's hard solo unless you do a rush build, which I don't enjoy. It'd be nice if they made specific solo only cards for each aspect to help balance solo play. Any thoughts on this? Or just love the fact that some heroes aren't built for solo. So every hero could be played solo. Uh, even Hulk, Hulk shield deck. For those, there were people down in the comments mentioned that like, oh yeah, you know, Hulk's the one example that can't play solo well. Um, no, Hulk shield plays solo really well. Plays really, 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 really well. Uh, it's tougher to do solo, uh, and that's what I like about it. I think it's a more interesting game, in my opinion. Uh, as far as solo-only cards, I don't know. I mean, would it be cool as a solo player? Yeah, it'd be cool. Like, I'd be four. I'll, I'll buy it. Uh, I think the community, most most people play this game multiplayer, so they probably hate it. Um, and I want to do whatever. I want Fancy Flight Games to do whatever it, it is that's going to make this game last as long as possible. So would I like so only cards? Yeah, I just don't know if they'd be like a little too broken because um, it's very, very weird to balance for solo. So I don't know. I'm not against it, but you know, I, I think every single hero at this point can play solo at least fairly well. Obviously some are better than others, uh, but every single one can play at least somewhat well. And um, you, know, you might have to do specific builds and whatnot, but y you can get them to work. Dreadpool engaging the first player. Is that on reveal or is he always attacking the first player while in play? He switches targets every turn. So for those that don't know, this is Dreadpool. Uh, so this is an important thing that I feel like doesn't get talked about enough, and maybe it's my fault, is this top line right here, right? It's above the when defeated. This top line, Dreadpool engages the first player. This is a constant ability. This means you should be checking it like every second. Now, obviously not really going to, but generally speaking, you should be checking it nonstop. It's always being checked. So the second the first player switches, he now engages that player instead because you are checking that all the time. I appreciate you being here for this week's Reddit reply. Again, um, let me know what you, your thoughts are about edited content because I'm really interested in this. I think this is something that is needed in the community and I would like to do. I just don't know how feasible it is with time, but maybe I can I can find some time by just not doing my, my actual job. Actually, that'd be cool. Uh, if I was able to do this full time, I could probably do this and have enough time, but... Um, Maybe, yeah, like I said, I may I'll just stop doing my real job. Um, but hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you made this far, make sure to hit the like button, hit subscribe, all that fun stuff. And we talked a bit about rules. Uh, I did a Reddit reply recently on rules. Check it out. Uh, let me know your thoughts on it. And if you need more rules questions or you have more rules questions, put them down below.